What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at one of the oldest known luxury fibers in the world, silk. In this quick episode, we'll actually evaluate what silk is, take a brief look at its history, observe the potential use case scenarios for the fiber, and lastly, look at its key characteristics. By the end of this episode, you'll honestly be able to walk away with a much better understanding of what this lesser known ultra luxury fiber is and understand whether or not it would make a good addition, whether to your personal wardrobe or as a part of an upcoming fashion collection. What's up design family? and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. Let's get right into it. Silk is a very, very special natural fiber. Textile used silk has long been obtained from the moth of caterpillars. And in short, it's a luxury fiber that is often referred to as the queen of fabrics. Silk is also special in the sense that it's the only natural filament fiber that is soft, lustrous, shiny, and extremely smooth to the touch. Now let's actually take a look at the physical dimensions of a typical silk fiber. When it comes to its diameter, we find that it's very, very fine. A typical silk fiber diameter ranges between 10 to 13 microns in diameter. And when it comes to the typical staple length, this again is quite surprising. We can have something as small or as short as 500,000 millimeters in length, which is extremely long. And this ranges all the way up to 1.5 million millimeters in length for a single strand. Now let's actually take a brief look at the history of silk. According to archaeological evidence, there's a lot of evidence to show that silk has been used for at least 5,000 years throughout history. And according to a Chinese legend, the Empress, the wife of the Yellow Emperor, was said to have sat beneath a yellow mulberry tree when she actually discovered that these silkworm cocoons that she saw overhead were made out of extremely delicate threads. Through a little bit of trial and error, the Empress then learned how to make the luxurious silk fabric out of these threads, and it became extremely, extremely popular during the Han Dynasty. And actually, silk became a currency that was almost traded and used as money, hence the name the Silk Road. Let's dive into the manufacturing techniques and how silk is actually made. Silk can actually be made by a ton of different types of insects, but the most common types of silk we see are from the caterpillar. A female moth lays between 200 and 300 eggs over a couple days, and these baby eggs or these baby caterpillars can grow from two millimeters all the way from 70 millimeters in length during the 25 to 30 days of nonstop eating that they go through. The silkworm then starts to spin a cocoon of silk, and when it's fully grown, one cocoon can actually create almost a mile of filament. Although silk is sourced from a natural source, there are, however, some potential drawbacks to this process. The boiling of the cocoons and the killing of the chrysalis, all to obtain the long silk filaments, raises a little bit of concern over animal welfare reasons, specifically because we don't quite understand how much pain the insects are put through throughout this process. And if you do want something of a more sustainable approach to sourcing silk, and you don't want to use the natural traditional silks, there are options out there and they come in the forms of wild tussa silk, ahimsa silk, and organic silk. All three are great and highly, highly desirable and sustainable options to natural silk. Now, lastly, let's actually move into the characteristics of silk. Why is this a fiber that you might want to invest your time, energy, and money into? Well, number one, and probably most importantly, is silk is extremely smooth and drapes with a graceful flow. This is most definitely unmatched. Silk has an unmatched flow and drape to it that you really can't get anywhere else. So that is a major plus in its benefit. Two, it's one of the strongest natural fibers that you can source. It's much stronger than cotton and much stronger than linen. Three, it's a very, very bad conductor of heat. So using silk on winter-based garments is probably not the best option. Four, it has high elasticity. So it has high natural elasticity without needing to add any other additional fibers to it. Five, it absorbs and releases moisture very readily and very quickly. So it is a great way to stay cool during the summer months. So we see silk being used on a lot of summertime clothing. 
Six, it's very, very, it fades over time and it weakens under certain conditions. So the long-term durability of silk, especially when not cared for properly, is not the best. Seven, it sheds dust and dirt very, very easily, which is a positive. It doesn't hold on to any of that grime. Eight, it does take its ties very well and solid or very vivid colors can be achieved readily and easily. Nine, it does tend to shrink, so make sure to wash it or to kind of put it through the proper care. 10, it does wrinkle or it doesn't wrinkle. It's very wrinkle resistant and you're always going to get a very consistent and smooth drape out of silk. You're not going to have a silhouette that's interrupted with nasty and sharp wrinkles. And lastly, it does gather static electricity very, very well. So do bear that in mind, especially if you're in a context where static electricity is a main concern. Well guys, that is it. That is a wrap on this episode in terms of everything you wanted to know about silk. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two. And if you want to watch other episodes like this, where we've gone in depth into different fibers, we've done episodes on cotton, polyester, and a ton of other fibers, definitely feel free to subscribe and check out the channel. I guarantee you, you won't regret it. Also, if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation call with me, you want to discuss anything from your personal style, or you want to learn how to set up your own fashion business, how to create unique and authentic designs, how to set up a manufacturing hub, then definitely check the link in the description and we can hop on a one-on-one -on -one call. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.